So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for registering for today's webinar, a case study on the Ottawa River Watershed Study Online Public Engagement. Please know that this webinar will be recorded and a link to the slides will be sent out after the webinar. So my name is Mary Leong and I'm the Communications Manager at PlaySpeak. And I'm joined today by Nancy Pollock and Marina Stephenson from Environment and Climate Change Canada. In today's session, we will first start with the case study on the Ottawa watershed, followed by a brief outline of other applications of PlaySpeak for the federal government. And finally, we will have some time for Q&A. And at this time, I would just like to remind everybody to ensure that your mic is muted during the presentation. As the presentation is going on, you can type your questions into the WebEx chat box and we will answer them at the end. And without further ado, let's get started. Nancy, thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, this is Nancy Pollock. Um, I'm with Environment and Climate Change Canada and uh, very happy to be here today to share our experience using PlaySpeak. Um, just uh, before I launch into the slides here, um, I'll just say that um, I first uh, learned about PlaySpeak um, in my previous job and uh, when I came here to Environment and Climate Change Canada to work on the Ottawa River Watershed Study, um, I felt that this uh, citizen engagement platform was an ideal fit for, um, for this study. Um, the study that we are doing is the result of a parliamentary motion, a private member's motion, M104. And um, because of that and because uh, we were undertaking to to do um, public and stakeholder engagement as part of uh, this study, we felt it was a good idea to try um, an experiment in in online citizen engagement and the the things that attracted us to place speak um, were also very much in line with where uh, consultations, federal government consultations are going. Um, in our case, um, we're noticing that more and more service delivery is going online and it's how citizens do, do business in their day to day and how they're increasingly looking to interact with government. So we felt it was a good uh, time to experiment with uh, new approaches to um, to engaging citizens. Typically, in government consultations, what happens is um, is a site goes up, and either a document goes up or an issue is presented, and citizens are invited to send their input to uh, an email address. And we really wanted to try something different. So one of the things that appealed to us about PlaySpeak was that it was um, uh, the discussions, the, the contributions of citizens were all done in an open uh, space um, uh, on, on the site. And um, in the last, while this study has been underway, um, the Government of Canada has released principles of public engagement and they include open and transparent as one of the, the key drivers. So, so we felt that this was a good, uh, a good feature that PlaySpeak had. Um, what really intrigued us was the geolocation features because we felt it was ideal for a consultation about a watershed and we knew that it had been used, PlaySpeak had been used by a couple of watersheds on the west coast with great success and so we connected with uh, one of them in particular and got uh, their best practices and lessons learned and applied them in the case of our study. So I'll be going through that and sharing with you what we did. Um, the other thing I'll just mention is that one of the other key things that was of interest to us because of the parliamentary motion and because it was really about how a watershed is governed, um, what we were really intrigued by was this opportunity for those who participated in this public consultation to connect with each other and also to stay connected even after the consultation and our study is over. Uh, too often what happens with these uh, uh, 
federally led consultations is is that people uh, submit their input, but then after the, the consultation is over, just due to privacy concerns, um, we're not really allowed to reach back out to those people afterwards and, and uh, carry on that conversation. But by putting our consultation out in a public space, public space using PlaySpeak, um, individuals are um, signing up and around an interest in the watershed and there's great potential to carry on that conversation afterwards. So that was the reason we chose PlaySpeak. It was sort of one of the, the main, uh, the, the intended uh, benefits that we saw of using this platform. Um, unintended benefits that came up was that um, we, because, um, because uh, uh, federal departments, if they are going to be gathering any in personal information about uh, Canadians as part of a consultation, do have to get a privacy impact assessment done. And this can sometimes be a fairly long process and can cause delays in the start of a consultation. But our, we were able to get an assessment that uh, by using a third-party site to host our consultation, that the privacy issues would be covered under PlaySpeak's uh, policies, which are built privacy by design. Um, and also, uh, so that was one uh, thing for us that typically um, we did not need to get this, this privacy impact assessment done. Um, and um, secondly, we had uh, once we had selected the tool, we you know looked at other options, but uh, recommended this tool. We were able to actually pay for it by uh, credit card because of the the low cost of the license, and so it saved us a number of weeks that would have otherwise been spent waiting for contracting to go through. So that's just kind of the the, the context setting for why we chose PlaySpeak uh, and uh, some of the other kind of unintended benefits. Next slide. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Marina now, who's going to tell you how how we got things set up as soon as we got the license. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so yes, once we get the got the license, um, there was a number of things that we had to get in order as we were. Um, getting organized to start developing our public consultations. And so in regards to internal to Environment and Climate Change Canada, this included getting the um, GIS polygon for the watershed boundary, as well as developing the polygons for the Stats Canada census areas within the watershed boundary. So you can see in the map there how the watershed is subdivided into different colors. Those are the different census areas. Now we chose to subdivide by census areas to help um, because there are, they're larger than PlaySpeak's default neighborhoods and also because the public would easily recognize these census areas and their names. So they'd be able to easily recognize that they're from Ottawa or Gatineau or Renfrew, et cetera. Related to this, uh, we also had to work on developing our own resources, so such as uh, different maps of the watershed, documents, and links. Um, which are to be used on the PlaySpeak resources page. We also put in a request to create a bilingual email address. Um, and with PlaySpeak directly, we, one of the first things we had to do was also agree on what is known as a vanity URL in both English and French. And this is just a URL link that is shorter um, that can be used in promotion, et cetera. Uh, next slide. So next, uh, we had to decide which features we wanted to use and how to best organize them. Um, and as soon as we had the license, we started building the site. Uh, features we wanted to use included the snapshot poll, um, discussion questions, the place it map, uh, resources page, and the notice board. Uh, the plan for using the site included having new content added in stages. So we developed initial con content for the um, engagement launch and then updated the content approximately every three to four weeks after that. We also decided to use the overview page, similar to a blog, um, drawing attention to the changes that we've made in the content. And next slide. Okay, so on that previous slide, you saw kind of what um, somebody coming to our site would have seen. Um, and now we're just kind of scrolling down a little bit more on the page, and this is 
that what they see a little bit further down. And I'll just mention here that uh, because our public engagement has now ended, um, I had to go in and do a bunch of screen captures. So what we're showing you is just some static images of the site as it appeared while the consultation was still underway. So what um, the various options that we chose were, were, were fairly deliberate and what we really wanted to try to do was to offer multiple ways for people to participate um, in the hopes that it would prompt them to kind of sign up and register. And this was advice that had been given to us by uh, Cowichan Valley Regional District who um, after whose you know, um, consultation we modeled our online presence through PlaySpeak. Um, and um, so of the different options, um, one, the one that you see here, um, as somebody would scroll down, they would see the results of, of the poll that was there you know, to date. So it, it captured the results in real time. And I presented this because the snapshot poll seemed to be the one that worked the best at, at drawing people in, and I'll share some analytics about that a little bit later. And um, the whole, all of our kind of the site, uh, all of our engagement around the site, all of our outreach around the site was really focused on trying to get people to sign up and register. And I must say that this is something that's a little bit new. Um, as I mentioned earlier, for most federal consultations, you either send something to an email inbox or if you participate online, some sites encourage you to create an alias and to to submit your 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 um, your input anonymously, and we decided to to not go that approach. We are re we were really asking people to identify themselves, to register using their own name and address and email address, um, a instead of you know creating an alias. Now, um, from a privacy perspective, we did not see any of that personal information. Um, all we saw was the individual's name, and we could see where in the watershed they lived, in which of those census areas they lived. But otherwise, we did not have access to any of that information. So this was this was something that was uh, was a little bit new. So here you see a screenshot. They they have the three tabs there. The polls is the one that appeared first, but you could also then click on the discussions tab, and you would get the menu of the different discussion topics or you could click onto the Place It uh, tab and go and see that, and we'll show you that view a little bit later. But in all cases, in order to participate, the visitor would then have to kind of register to proceed. Next slide. So once somebody did uh, register and decided to, you know, participate in the poll, this is the the results that kind of showed up. So what what you can what's really interesting here is that um, not only is it a real time presentation of results, which is the the bar graph to the right, but you see the dots to the left all change color. So you can see where uh, the responses to different options, if they may have clustered in one, like let's say on the Ontario side of our watershed that uh, people felt one way as opposed to the Quebec side. So this was a feature of PlaySpeak that we found was quite interesting. Um, we we fo fo fielded two different poll questions. The first one was a more generic question, a fairly general question. Um, please uh, let us know what you know. What's your main connection to the watershed? Um, and uh, and then the second one is the one that you see here, which is more the the substance of our. Um, of our uh, our consultation, which is uh, uh, how to uh, promote collaboration in the Ottawa River watershed. Uh, next slide. Excuse me while I turn off my phone. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I'll just say that uh, where um, Marina and I are participating from Ottawa and the Place Speak hosts for this uh, uh, conference are in Vancouver, so. There we go. We shouldn't have any more phone calls. <laughs> All right. So um, we. Uh, so here we are. So this um, the, we we fielded a total of eight questions. Um, we did two or three at a time. So we presented them in three waves. And what um, what you have to do as you're preparing your, your discussions is you have to identify kind of the headings you see here, collaboration in the watershed, governance body, and citizen science. So those are the, the, the teasers that appear when you when you click on that tab. Um, we um, we 
did some, even though these questions all appeared at the same time and at the very end we had our six core questions appearing all at once, um, we did individual or distinct promotion around the different questions and I'll go over that a little bit in a minute. Um, and the discussion boards uh, the, could only accept comments. So you'll see here um, outlined in orange, after we'd had our discussions going for a bit, we realized we needed to kind of add an additional, uh, not disclaimer, but an additional bit of instruction after the questions to direct people to the notice board if they had images or photos or videos to share. Um, the next slide, please. So um, one of the key things we did in following the example of Cowichan Valley was to, to develop and present what they called storyboards um, to initiate discussion. So um, what we did was we had our graphic design uh, people help us uh, produce these and they were posted on the site. And we also uh, printed these up in a poster format for our in-person public events. Um, and our creative services folks also based on these uh, storyboards developed some postcards for us and also some what we call info bites that could be used for social media outreach. Next slide. After the discussions when they came almost came to an end, we um, developed some additional storyboards to kind of summarize what we had heard. We decided to go on the values and concerns questions that we had put. We decided to kind of analyze the, the input on the site um, by using some keywords and then creating these word clouds. And uh, so this presents visually kind of what we had heard were the, the, the key values uh, that citizens had regarding the watershed and their key concer concerns. And these were put up 10 days before the end of the consultation um, as, uh, as kind of a interim feedback to, as to what we had heard. Next slide. The notice board, um, as you can see here, so on the left during the online public engagement, we you know, just had a very general statement about using the space to upload any photos, videos, or documents. And um, I think the, the thing to note here is that we included this feature because there had been significant flooding in this region in the watershed last uh, year, a year ago now. And we thought that in the event that there were people who had been affected by those floods that had photos or videos or articles that they wanted to share or upload, that this would be a space for them to do that. Um, in the end, uh, we, I put here that it's limited up to uptake, and I think it's that uh, there, you know, we had one individual, one kayaker who posted a very cool video um, kayaking on the river, but for the most part, um, this was not the way that uh, most of those who uh, registered uh, chose to participate. Um, and when we closed our discussions on April 27th, um, what we decided to do was we put up the summary storyboards on our site, and I showed you two of them. There's two additional ones that are up there. And we've, we're, we've left the notice board open, and we're asking people to use that space to share any comments they may have. Um, to date, we haven't had any comments, so we're hoping that means we did a pretty good job of summarizing what we had heard. Next slide and over to Marina. So uh, probably one of my favorite features um, is the place it map. So this uh, feature allowed users to pinpoint an area on the map um, where there are issues or things that we should be aware of happening in the watershed, um, as well as we also asked them to tell us where data is being collected. And uh, to promote this feature, um, there were actually four separate tweets that were sent out from the Environment and Climate Change Canada social media team that specifically mentioned this feature. Uh, we also sent out targeted emails to researchers as well as to Organism de Bassin Versant in Quebec and conservation authorities in Ontario um, as they're responsible for collecting data in the watersheds. So we wanted them to go on and use this feature. Uh, next slide. So 
So on the resources page, uh, we were able to organize um, various resources under multiple headings, uh, such as about the study and useful links. And within each section, content was organized by file types, such as images, video, PDF documents, and links, to provide some background and information to those that are coming and visiting our consultation. Next slide. So these next two slides show you how the different file types appear um, on our consultation uh, site. Uh, here you can see how images appear. You can see um, a quick preview of the images. Um, it also should also be noted that both the English and French resources appear together on the same page. Uh, next slide, please. And here is how documents and links also appear on the site. And again, note that um, they're both English and French um, appear together. Next slide. Okay, we're going to turn now to talking um, more about how we promoted um, our study and the, in particular, the online uh, public engagement. Um, this was one of the, the, the key bits of advice that uh, the Cowich and Valley um, Regional District had given to us, which was to, to, do, to, to have all of your outreach and promotion and all of your public events focused on really directing people towards the online site. And again, this was in the spirit of really wanting all the conversations to take place um, in a public space. Um, just because it was online didn't mean it was, you know, the, so that was to do it online. Um, now, we had organized a couple of um, in-person events um, in, in the Ottawa Gatineau region. And one of the things that we were concerned about was making sure that we could reach uh, citizens throughout the watershed. And as you may have seen in the original map, it's, it's a fairly extensive area and it, uh, it goes right up into sort of the, the wilds of, of Quebec and also uh, extends, uh, um, what's the, the furthest area on the west, in, on the Ontario side, it's, uh, you know, Pasca, Tagami, Machuan, and up near Temiskaming. So we, um, we went to talk to our folks in the advertising team about perhaps doing ads in community newspapers in, in 16 of the kind of largest population centers outside Ottawa Gatineau. And what they came back with was a suggestion that we use social media advertising instead. Um, and um, in, in, in the sense we, what we did was we were able to, to, to um, we used public information notices um, uh, as opposed to quote unquote strict advertising. So the idea being that this is a consultation on which we want citizens to part in which we want citizens to participate and we had a responsibility to make sure that they were aware of it. So um, on February 19th, uh, we started uh, the Facebook uh, and I think Facebook and Instagram are the two platforms it ran on. The ad started running in the 16 communities outside of the National Capital Region. And you can see how almost immediately the number of views to our page spiked. And so given the success of that, we decided in um, early March when we made a decision to extend the, the length of our, our consultation to the end of April, we also added uh, Facebook ads in the Ottawa Gatineau region. And um, so, and one thing I'll mention too is that this was all occurring at around the same time as uh, the whole Facebook and Oxford Analytica um, uh, was dominating kind of the media um, and it was really exposing how many of these social media platforms work in terms of, you know, the information that they gather about individuals. Um, but um, in our case, um, it was really about um, just identifying people who, who's, who were known to be residing in around those areas and to push these ads out to them. Next slide, please. So what happened was is as the fiscal year ended, um, the social media ads stopped, the public information notices stopped, and you can see that the page views actually flattened out quite a bit um, while that happened. So we had applied um, towards the end of March to have that resume, and it took about almost a week until that was able to be reactivated through the various advertising planning process. But uh, as soon as the ads picked up again um, on April 6th, you can see that the page views 
um, again um, started to 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 go up again. Um, in the end, we did um, 63 days of ads, um, and I'll go over some of the analytics and results of that in a minute. Next page. But what I really want to focus on is all of the effort that we um, we we put into what I call outreach and uh, communication. Um, and again, as I was mentioning earlier, it's really about sending people to the site. So um, most of the outreach that we did was what I would call digital or online. Um, it was um, um, emails that we sent out from lists that we created. Um, and it was also emails sent from the PlaySpeak site to registered participants. But what this slide shows you here on, on top of the green line, above the green line, is um, is all of the um, the Facebook and uh, Twitter uh, uh, postings that were um, directly related to our, our our study. The ones in orange are the ones that were issued by our department, and the ones in blue are those that are that were sent out by um, by other organizations related to our study. Um, a couple things to kind of note here. Uh, so in the end, we had. 56 tweets and 14 posts on our departmental um, Facebook account, and um, so you know you divide what we when we count that we count English and French as being separate. So, um, um, and each of those had a photo or some kind of a visual, like an info bite, so a, 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 a something done by our graphic design team. Um, we're lucky because our department has a fairly extensive photo bank that we were able to draw upon. Um, you'll um, see um, at the bottom here that I, I indicate, you know, where we added our second set of questions and then our third set of questions and where we changed the poll. And the, the, the icons that are under the green line uh, really talk about the emails that we sent out, the webinars that we held, uh, the emails sent from the PlaySpeak site, and so on. And we also did some presentations at a university, meetings with uh, youth organizations or young people, um, and there were a couple of radio interviews that were done in English and French by our um, our director, and also uh, three articles in water-related e-publications. And all of, in all of these cases, it. Um, uh, it was talk, you know, encouraging people to go to the site. And one of the things I'll mention too, at the very beginning and, and at the end of January, to launch our, our engagement, we had the minister um, taped a video asking people to to participate, and she also retweeted a couple of times. And um, whenever you know the minister sent out a tweet or retweeted, uh, we could see a significant. Uh, Spike. So this, the green line here shows the number of people who actually registered, as opposed to the other slide, which showed page views. So this is showing the people that actually registered. Next slide. And then again, um, you can sort of see how the registrations even flattened out when uh, we weren't running the, the Facebook ads anymore. So, um, you know, one one thing, you know, two things to note here when the when the Facebook ads resumed again, we saw you know registrations going up again, and you'll notice kind of after they started, there's sort of a a, a period of a couple of weeks where there were very few uh, tweets sent out by our department, and that's because there were other priority announcements going on at the time. But um, we were continuing to send out our emails to stakeholders, and uh, through the the, the reach um, of these ads, we were able to continue getting registrations right through till um, the day that we closed our citizen engagement. Next slide. So taking a look just sort of at the high-level results, um, we were live for 97 days from January 25th to April 27th. And um, the second bullet here talks about, the, uh, sorry, the first, the first bullet sort of um, refers to that little screen capture at the very top, which shows that we had a total of 41,235 page views on PlaySpeak. We had 383 people who registered or connected and we had 215 um, uh, individual comments that were posted on our on our site. And um, from from near the very beginning, once there was a, you know enough 
people sort of connected and participating, those numbers appeared at all times. So we were very open and transparent at all times about how many people were connected and um, how many people had how many pages had been viewed on our site. Um, the public, uh, the second image there shows a screen capture of what the ad looked like. It was actually like a little video that was rent running, and then you would click on a link below it to get uh, tr to connect to the actual study site on on PlaySpeak. And our advertising team, based on sort of their number crunching, um, have have said that this was very much a successful campaign and some highlights here about the number of different account holders in within the watershed both in the Ottawa Gatineau area and also in and around the 16 sort of largest uh, municipalities outside of, of the national capital region the numbers that that were actually reached with these ads and I should say that these were multiple hits like you know it wasn't just one time that they saw it it would be multiple times throughout the period and then there were, you know, the 160,000 uh, views of the, the video that you see on the right. And then they have a total of 15,239 click-throughs to the study site registered from these ads. And, you know, I raise this too because we really felt that education and awareness about uh, the goals of the of the study and about the Ottawa River watershed, the issues in the Ottawa River watershed, that these were also kind of an important part of our study. And so, um, in this way, we you know we're we're confident that we uh, we we supported that goal and achieved what we were setting out to do. Next slide. One of the bits of feedback that we got was that uh, people really liked the. Um, um, the different opportunities to participate, the different options. So we had the snapshot poll, we had the discussion boards, we had the place it map, and we did promote them using multiple channels. I've kind of referred to them before. Um, it's hard to kind of unpack sort of, you know, rates of participation and, and uh, you know, and so on, because we're really in untried, untried waters here. Um, very few other consultations that we know of have had all of their data, you know, right up for, for public view. Um, and even within the, the different sort of options to participate, there were different results. For example, you know, our first poll, um, we had 83% of registered participants participating. And by the time we got to the second poll, there were many more uh, people registered. Um, we we only had about 25% participating. But even still, you know, with the first poll, it was 236 um, who voted on on that uh, on that poll, and for the second one, it was 97 people who 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 answered the question. Um, next slide. Um, and I think you know what what I hope you saw from that other visual showing all the different outreach activities is that the site itself was only one part of a real comprehensive and inclusive stakeholder engagement strategy. Um, I showed the icons of uh, of the different emails, the five rounds of emails that we sent, but there were other emails that were sent relating to um, you know customized engagement guides that we prepared and sent to the different levels of government and others who were kind of more active players in the watershed. Um, and so that, that was also sort of um, a, a key sort of level of effort on our part. We did hold two open door public meetings um, where, you know, the, in, in, citizens were given the opportunity to meet the study team and to see a demo of PlaySpeak. And those were promoted as well um, by um, Environment and Climate Change Canada's communications branch. And finally, we did hold a multi-stakeholder workshop at the end of November with the Ottawa Riverkeeper, which is a key player in the watershed. And we collaborated with the, the Innovation Lab of another government department to deliver that workshop. Next slide. So now as for what's next, um, like I mentioned earlier, we're, we've still got the storyboards up there and we're inviting comments until May 11th. And the resources pages will still be left up there and, and open for consultation. Um, we're planning to use PlaySpeak to post our draft report and to invite comments. Uh, probably by the time we get everything written and it's ready for sharing, um, it will be early fall. Um, uh, but um, as a result, you know, it's our intention to renew the license for another year so that um, 
that we can keep the conversation going. Um, and I'll just mention that I think it was last August that we we got our license, um, just to give give you a, sort of a sense. And so we we spent that time getting familiar with the platform and and preparing the content. Um, and we didn't launch our consultation until. Um, January 25th, um, but you'll you know see reference in, in a few slides to another consultation that's taking place right now with Environment and Climate Change Canada, and they were able to kind of um, go from decision to launch in a couple of weeks. So um, so our experience is not one you should use as a guide, but uh, but you know one thing to just say is that we found. Uh, I found in many ways the site was very easy to to use and to and to to um, uh, to, to work with. Next slide. We're now going to turn to some technical observations. So Maureen is going to tell you kind of the ins and outs of it and uh, also some of the challenges we had. Yeah. So um, first, I should note that you know this was the first time that a a uh, linked bilingual consultation was done on PlaySpeak. So um, we had both an English and French page that were linked together, meaning that no matter what site you were on, whether you're looking at the French content or English content, you can see all the comments that were being posted by users. Uh, however, this did mean that changes to the site content that needed to be done um, was done by PlaySpeak in order to avoid problems between the linked English and French sites. Um, we also needed to check the site consistently in both languages to ensure that glitches didn't happen um, over the course of a, our consultation. Um, also, uh, we could not upload documents from our desktops here at work. Uh, File Picker, which is uh, used to upload, is blocked by Environment and Climate Change Canada uh, firewalls. Um, and we put in a request with shared services, um, but that hasn't been processed yet. So this required a number of workarounds, um, including I worked from home in order to upload resources to the resource page and download um, reports from PlaySpeak about um, discussion question posts, et cetera. Um, and as well, as I mentioned, PlaySpeak was uh, responsible for updating the French and English content directly. We just sent them what needed to be changed. In addition, the resources page is combined. As I mentioned earlier, you can see both the French and English uh, documents together on one page instead of just uh, the French resources on the French page, et cetera. Um, the snapshot poll that we used um, was forced choice, um, which meant that you didn't have the option to provide to type in an answer. You had to um, click on which option you preferred. Um, and it also, should also be noted that the snapshot poll cannot be edited once it's published. So make sure you do not enter it until it is a final question. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is that the site behaves differently depending on what device you're, you use and what browser. So uh, we had, for example, we had experiences with English content appearing on the French site, which is a glitch, and that happened um, primarily on Internet Explorer, for example. So just some things um, to note. Yeah, next slide. So those were really offered just in, in in way of kind of sharing some of the you know the the typical things that happen when you as you monitor your consultation and uh, and you have to sort of stay on top of it at all times and you know one thing I can just add too is that um, we we found we got very good service from PlaySpeak when we brought things to their attention and uh, we actually found in some cases it was a real advantage that they were three hours behind us in in Vancouver because we'd be working away, we'd send them something at the end of the day, and then they were still working for another three or four hours after we went home. So, so we found it was very quick turnaround to get uh, to get things fixed, and uh, we got very good support from them. So the the final uh, slide that I wear is we just want to kind of leave you with some lessons learned and best practices. So, so you know um, I know the, my other colleagues here at ECCC got the got the license and got things going within two weeks. But our recommendation is to kind of you know get the license early and and build the site in one language. Then what we did is we showed our our proposed site to uh, a task force that we had that was advising us and to our manager. Here, so it was really helpful to be able to kind of show them um, what it was that was going to appear on on 
online, um, and uh, so that was a real advantage. Um, we spent a lot of time, you know, um, helping Play Speak with. Uh, we translated a lot of the boilerplate content, the stuff that appears on the sort of site architecture, and you know, where anybody can use our translations. We've got copies of them. We can share them, um, and Play Speak has them. So, so they can feel free to use, you know, the wording that we used. Um, uh, and the other thing is, is that. Um, the, with PlaySpeak, you you set up your uh, you get sort of more uh, data from Google Analytics, but we didn't start that process early enough because again you have to apply to Shared Services Canada to get a Google Analytics uh, number to to enter in. So by the time we got our Google Analytics um, account, um, it was too late in the process. But it would have been very helpful uh, to find out from which sites and which source as people were coming to PlaySpeak. So that's what you do through Google Analytics. Um, I know that our colleagues working on the, the, the new consultation have that set up right now, and so they're able to track that from the start. And I hope you've kind of seen from what we've presented that, you know, uh, just even, you know, once you've figured out the content and managing the content and overseeing kind of what's happening and so on, it's really, um, it, it, working on the site is really sort of just a quarter of the work. Like a lot of it is, a lot of our effort was spent on sort of the promotion and outreach and uh, raising awareness about the study. And, uh, um, you know, we were very lucky. We were able to leverage our communications colleagues here in a government department, but even we found that it was a very crowded space. We have a lot of other announcements going on. Um, um, I put here, don't be afraid to change things midstream. In fact, that was one of the bits of advice that we got from Couch and Valley, and it worked really well with us, which is that, you know, unlike a lot of consultations where it's very static, you know, it, they put up a question or a document and they ask for input, um, we really changed the conversation throughout. We, we had one set of questions, then we had a second set of questions, and then we had a third set of questions, and we put different visuals up, and we changed the poll. And, and I think that really made it a much more dynamic conversation and it really got, got across the message that we were, we're interested in having a conversation and we're hoping that the conversation will continue. And finally, as I said, you know, we felt that it's, you know, we used the site as a way to kind of raise awareness and increase understanding about the watershed. And, uh, and so that's one of the reasons too that we're going to keep the site um, open and also to sort of, you know, ensure that the conversation can continue. So I think that's all I have to say. If we want to go to the next slide, I'll pass it back to Mary. Great. Thank you so much, Nancy and Marina, for sharing your experience and your expertise. I just wanted to briefly um, highlight some other applications for PlaySpeak. Um, as Dave alluded to, we're currently working with Environment and Climate Change Canada on another consultation, and this one is actually um, Canada-wide. So um, that's moving Canada towards zero plastic waste. And the map they've actually put up is a map of all of Canada that's been broken down by province and territory. So um, that's actually how they'll see the results coming in. Um, but of course, it can be used to consult on new policy initiatives, on infrastructure, on resource development, and a wide variety um, of issues and concerns that um, various departments might have. And so now I'd like to just take us over to the Q&A. Um, if you've got any questions, this is a great time to raise them while we're here. Um, otherwise, you can also contact us directly, um, either myself here at PlaySpeak or Nancy at Environment and Climate Change Canada for any questions. So I'd just like to open up the floor uh, if, if there are any questions at this point. All right, well, hearing nothing at this point, um, like I mentioned, this webinar has been recorded and the slides and a recording will be sent to everybody who uh, is attending today. And of course, feel free to follow up with us if you have any additional questions. So thank you very much for your time uh, and we hope to hear from you. Thanks for the opportunity to share our experience. Thank you so much, Nancy and Marina. All right, have a very good afternoon, everybody.